What is up? Corbin here, and I'm going to show you how to edit GoPro Max 360 footage in Final Cut Pro X. Sixty. When it comes to editing 360 max footage, it takes a lot more work, it takes a lot more playing around with and getting used to. But I think it's worth it because once you reframe the footage that you get from the GoPro Max, the shots turn out pretty sick. So let's cut the bull and let's jump right into it. All right, so the first thing that you want to do before you do anything is you want to make sure that you have the GoPro Player desktop application downloaded. The GoPro Max will give you a raw .360 file that you have to convert in GoPro Player to a usable format so you can edit. Once you have the GoPro Player downloaded, you can click on whatever clip you want to convert. I got a little clip here of when I mounted a GoPro Max on an RC Mario Kart. So all you really have to do here is export it. So it's just in a different file format. You can actually edit and reframe the clip in GoPro Player, but for the sake of this video, we are going to just convert this. So once you have your clip loaded up, you can trim it however you want by clicking the scissors. I'm gonna cut here, trim it there, and then we'll just trim here. And like right there. There we go. And then you hit the check mark, and then you hit export trim. And then go to advanced options. I usually export out of GoPro Player to ProRes 422 or ProRes HQ. Most of the time you can just use ProRes 422. ProRes HQ is kind of overkill. I would recommend clicking mount optimization because that will adjust the stitch line in your footage. Say you're using a GoPro Max on a pole, it'll actually help you mask out the pole that you're holding. So it just looks like you're getting the invisible selfie stick shot while using a GoPro Max. But I always click mount optimization and all of these. So here's what you would do. Then you hit next and then you name it and save it. We're just gonna name this one Mario Kart and I will be back when this is done. All right, now we're in Final Cut Pro and I am ready to start a new project. I already imported uh, the Mario Kart clip that I exported from GoPro player along with another 360 clip of the GoPro Max mounted under the tower of my boat. So I have two clips here to show you and we're going to hit new project to start out and we're just going to name our project for the sake of this video. We're just going to go GoPro Max 1080p HD 1920 by 1080 24 or 30 frames per second. We'll just go 30 for the sake of this video. Actually, no, we won't. We'll go 24 and everything else is good. Rendering should be whatever your footage is at. So I did these two clips in 422 HQ. Um, and what I mean by that is that's what I exported them or converted them out of GoPro Player as. So new project ready to go. Drop your first clip in the timeline and you will see that it looks like this. And that is weird. My What is my dog doing? Looks like he's about to uh never mind so you scroll through your clip and everything just looks kind of zoomed in right so what you got to do is click on your clip and go up in the inspector under orientation change mapping to tiny planet then it looks like this and here you go it's just a standard stationary view looking straight down like a tiny planet you can adjust your field of view this is how you get your zoom in and zoom out you can tilt with X. So if you wanted this to be flat, you could drop this at 90. So this would be how a normal GoPro would look. Y is your left and right. And then Z is rolling like a roll cage. Once you get used to kind of playing around with these, you can set up your shots however you like. And then how you reframe this is with keyframes. Let's reframe this clip a little bit just to give you an idea of how it works in Final Cut Pro. So I'm gonna start this clip. Let's, we're just gonna follow Mario around. So I'm going to start with the clip here and I'm gonna put the camera in front of him. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit. We're gonna tilt up X 
and we're gonna spin Y over. So we have the camera in front of him. Maybe we tilt down just a little bit just to see more of them. And yeah, so that's all right. So we're gonna have the camera start at this spot right here in the timeline at this orientation location. So you wanna set a keyframe for all of your X, Y, Z. I'm actually not gonna be using Z in this, but you can play around with that if you want. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for X, for Y, and for the field of view. And then we're going to scroll forward and you see how he's turning and the camera's not turning. So if you want it to follow him, you would just go to a point where you think it's gonna stop. So like right there, he does a full, little Mario does a full 180, right? He makes a turn and I want the camera to follow him. So at this point is where the RC car is done turning. So we are going to set the Y back at him like this. And then, you know, you can tilt up a little bit and then maybe zoom out. And then from keyframe to keyframe, it looks like this. It'll follow him. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you would reframe that shot just like that. Now I'll drop in my other clip, the boat clip, and just show you that real quick. So this is the same thing. You drop it in, you go over to the orientation, you put it in tiny planet and it's under my tower. So it looks pretty funky, but this was just to get a shot straight down so we can straighten her out a little bit. And, um, get everything kind of lined up how you want it. And yeah, maybe zoom back just a little bit. All right. And then we can go to the very beginning and we can set keyframes and move forward a little bit to say maybe here and just kind of mess around with this like that and we can look down at what i'm doing right there that's me in the back let me zoom in just a bit and then and then like right about here we can add you know, the same keyframes that are here, so it holds. And then once we start turning, maybe about halfway through the turn, we can back this up. And then bring it back in. And maybe add a keyframe in the middle of this one and then Locked in with this last keyframe, maybe just turn it so we're in line with it. And we can kind of see how that looks. And it's not too bad. It's not too shabby. When the footage is slowed down like this, or you just have a longer clip where your keyframes are spaced out further, um, the movement won't be as jerky. So there is actually a way around the jerky camera movement from keyframe to keyframe. Um, if you want to go this route, uh, it's kind of a pain, but it is doable. I've done it a couple times in my videos. So say you want the camera to already be moving from keyframe to keyframe, you know, as your clip starts instead of like your clip not moving and then going into a camera move. Say you want your video to clip to start here, right? So instead of adding the keyframe at this exact point at the start of the clip, I would just extend the beginning of the clip and then mark where you are and then add your first keyframe back towards the beginning of the clip because it's still going to take into consideration where that keyframe is and it's going to start moving the orientation uh, before your clip even plays. I'll show you what I mean. So say I put it at zeros right here, right? And 203. And then I go to like up here past the marker and put, you know, uh, 
255 and just move these around like that and then like that now where your clip would start the camera is already moving so instead of it ramping into it quickly from zero to movement zero to movement it's already moving when your clip starts and you can do that for the end of the clip also so for the end of the clip say the end of your clip is right here right the end of your clip is right there so you would extend the clip if you have that room and then you would mark it and then you would go over here and add an ending keyframe maybe exaggerate it a little bit further than you actually want it because you kind of want it to hit where you uh want it to be in the video so instead of slowing down and just stopping as shown here um because you put your keyframes past your end point or your end clip point so your clip will end there and your keyframes are past that over here now it'll just be a continuous thing like that and then it'll just roll into whatever clip you have next so i know that may have been confusing this is just a way around um having continuous movement in your 360 clips while keyframing you can do it either way just remember don't put the keyframes too close together because the movement will be very jerky so that is it now, just so you know, if you use Premiere Pro, there is a plugin called GoPro FX Reframe that allows you to ease in those keyframes really, really good for movement. I will put a link in the description below to a video on how to use that plugin for 360 footage in Premiere Pro. It's really good. It's done by Abe Kisselbitz. If I need really smooth movement, then I will actually go into Premiere Pro and edit my 360 footage there quick and then bring that back into Final Cut Pro. But that's besides the point. I just wanted to run that by you just so you know. GoPro FX Reframe is not available for Final Cut Pro X. Hopefully someday it will be. So for now, if you're just using Final Cut Pro, this is how we have to do it. All right, so that's it. I hope this video helps you edit GoPro Max footage in Final Cut Pro X. If it did, uh, leave me a like. Let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and just GoPro content in general. I'll see you in the next one.